Okay. So, in the last class, uh, uh, what we were talking about was the circle criterion. So, uh, the general idea was that uh, we know if you have a passive system and you interconnect it, okay, a passive linear system and you have a non-linearity which is passive, that means something which lies in the zero infinity sector, then when you interconnect the two, you get asymptotic stability. Now, um, uh, one could uh, think of a class of nonlinearities which is not really the zero infinity sector, but some other, let us say, k1, k2 sector. So, in the last lecture, we went through these various transformations that you can do, and these transformations change the given nonlinearity which is in some k1, k2 sector into a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector. Now, when you have a linear plant interconnected with this given nonlinearity, and we want to talk about the stability of this closed loop system, uh, we could change the nonlinearity from the given k1, k2 sector to the zero infinity sector. But uh, you see that is on the feedback loop. So, then appropriate changes need to be done on the linear plant and when you do the appropriate changes on the linear plant, then the interconnection between this new linear plant and the new nonlinearity is completely equivalent to the interconnection between the old linear plant and the old nonlinearity. The only difference in this whole process is that now the new nonlinearity is in the zero infinity sector which means it is passive and because that is passive the corresponding new uh, linear system if that is passive then we know that in this new system with the new linearity and the new nonlinearity that is asymptotically stable and because the two systems are are uh, equivalent therefore the old linear system interconnected with the old nonlinearity is stable okay so this this was the essential idea that was used now, uh, transforming a given nonlinearity in the k1, k2 sector to a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector, we can do that using these loop transformations. And, uh, but then, if one does not want to do this loop transformation, but you are given a linear plant, you are given a linear plant, the old linear plant and the nonlinearity then you know by loop transformation the linear plant is converted to some new linear plant which must be passive but without doing this conversion of the linear plant if one can predict whether the new linear plant along with becomes passive or not by looking at the nyquist plot of the old linear plant then that there is some advantage in this and the circle criterion is one thing which lets us do that Okay. So, uh, perhaps I will just uh, repeat a bit about uh, what we have already discussed earlier. Uh, so, perhaps uh, the situation where you are looking at a non-linearity in the k1, k2 sector and we will see what, what the linear plant changes to and so on. Okay. So, suppose we consider a non-linearity. So, suppose we consider a non-linearity which is in the uh, k1, k2 sector. Okay, so, what we mean by that is if you think of psi as the input to the nonlinearity and phi as the output to the nonlinearity, well, there is this line with slope k1 and there is this other line with slope k2. And uh, what we are saying is that the nonlinearity is such that it lies in the k1, k2 sector. Okay. And of course, the other way to talk about this is that uh, phi by psi is this thing is greater than k1 and it is less than k2. So, this is another way that you can rewrite this, uh, you know, characterize this nonlinearity. Now, if one is looking at um, a, a linear plant G of s and interconnected with this nonlinearity NL in this feedback form. Okay, so, suppose we have this particular situation, then we want to talk about uh, the uh, asymptotic stability 
uh, I mean under what conditions on GS, I mean what, what should be the characteristics of GS such that when GS is interconnected with a non-linearity in the K1, K2 sector, the resulting system is asymptotically stable. And then what we had discussed in the last class is that this non-linearity in the NL, uh, I mean this non-linearity NL, this can be converted into a non-linearity. Uh, okay, so, we can go through it in two steps. So, first you have this N L and you first convert it into let, let me call it N L 1 which is something in the, so N L 1 belongs to, so this is a non-linearity in the 0 k sector where this k is k 2 minus k 1. Okay, so, you can do one transformation like this and then this can be followed by another transformation. The second transformation is when you convert something in the 0 k sector to this second non-linearity which is a passive non-linearity that means, it is in the 0 infinity sector. Okay. Now, uh, when, when one does this, then uh, uh, the linear plant which we had here G or G of S, that also gets transformed in a certain way and we have uh, talked about it earlier. So, the, the way it gets transformed is, when you take the non-linearity N L to N L 1, then the linearity gets transformed to G upon 1 plus K 1 G. Okay. So, this becomes the new linear plant with this non-linearity. So, the interconnection of these two is equivalent to the, the original intersection that we were interested in and then this conversion from the 0 k sector to the 0 infinity sector makes a conversion here which makes this k g upon 1 plus k 1 g plus 1, but then we saw that this is equivalent to 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g. Okay. So, now this non-linearity with this plant which is 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g, this interconnection feedback interconnection between this linear plant and this non-linearity is exactly the same as the interconnection between this original plant and this non-linearity. And because this non-linearity is in the 0 infinity sector, we now can use the passivity theorem. And so, if this resulting plant from G given G and use K 1 and K 2 and make this new plant and the, if this new plant is passive and stable or, uh, or in other words the Nyquist plot of this new thing lies in the right half plane and it is stable then this interconnection is asymptotically stable and that translates to this original interconnection being asymptotically stable. Okay. But one would like to check that, uh, so what we want to check is the following. So, given G and uh, therefore, the Nyquist plot of G, we want to check whether this given 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g, whether this is positive real. Okay. And then uh, in, the, in the last class, I, uh, um, I sort of demonstrated uh, how we do this checking. So, one thing you do is if you look at the denominator, this gives I mean, uh, this gives that uh, the a pole of the system is like when g is equal to minus 1 by k 1. Uh, so, of course, k 1, of course, k 1 is less than k 2. And uh, since k 1 is less than k 2, so therefore, uh, minus 1 by k 1, let us say is this point and minus 1 by k 2 is this point. And uh, when you are trying to evaluate this transfer function given g j omega, so we said that suppose, suppose you have any point z here and uh, let me call it z, uh, z and you want to evaluate 1 plus k 1 or 
rather k 2 z upon 1 minus k, uh, 1 plus k 1 z. Then the angle of this is essentially you draw these vectors from here to here and here to here and look at these angles alpha and beta and the angle of this transfer function is going to be alpha minus beta. Now, uh, asking for this uh, transfer function's Nyquist plot to lie in the right half plane is the same as asking for alpha minus beta to be in this range between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Okay. And then uh, we made the main statement of the circle criterion which was that you look at this circle Okay. Now, inside the circle, if you have any point z, I mean along the boundary of the circle, if you take any point z, then uh, 1 plus k 2 z upon 1 plus k 1 z, this an, uh, has an angle which is precisely pi by 2. Yeah, pi by 2 if it is up there and minus pi by 2 if it is in the lower semicircle. If it is in the upper semicircle, it is plus pi by 2 in the lower semicircle minus pi by 2. If the point z is outside, then this alpha minus beta satisfies this condition. And if the point z is inside the circle, then alpha minus beta in fact turns out to be, I mean uh, the modulus value of alpha minus beta turns out to be larger than pi by 2. Okay, and uh, this is where uh, we stopped the last time. Okay, so, what does this mean? This means, so suppose you are given this g and you are given this Nyquist plot of g and the Nyquist plot of g lies completely outside this circle. Okay. So, maybe this is the Nyquist plot of the circle. Uh, this is a Nyquist plot of the plant, so g g omega. Now, this lies completely outside the circle. So, for every point along the Nyquist plot, because of the argument that we had given earlier, alpha minus beta, uh, this angle is going to uh, be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So, what it means is for this particular plant g, if you calculate 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g and plot the Nyquist plot of this new transfer function, then that Nyquist plot is like going to lie completely in the right half plane. But um, in the discussion that we had earlier, we had uh, said that uh, given a linear plant, if the Nyquist plot lies in the uh, right half plane that means the real part of the uh, of every point on the Nyquist plot is positive that does not necessarily mean that the transfer function the given transfer function is positive real. Uh, I had mentioned that uh, if one also insists that not just the imaginary axis but all of the right half plane maps into the right half plane then that transfer function is certainly positive real. Now, how does one guarantee that uh, given such a situation where, okay, so, so what we were looking at earlier, so let us say, let us say we have this circle here, okay, and uh, uh, let us say this is minus 1 by k 2 and this is, this here is minus 1 by k 1 and you have a uh, you have a Nyquist plot and uh, let me okay so let me think of the Nyquist plot like that so g j omega of course this g j omega does not enter into the circle and therefore when you transform g j omega into 1 plus k 2 g upon 1 plus k 1 g so let me call it g 1. So, if you draw g 1 of j omega, then that will lie completely in the right half of the complex plane. Okay. 
But when you do this mapping of G1 in into this, maybe okay, in this particular case, I would not know what the Nyquist plot of G1 looks like, but let us suppose that uh, it looks uh, let us say something like this. Okay. Now, uh, of course, this would be the other half of the Nyquist plot. Now, whether the right half plane under this map G 1 maps inside or outside, how does one decide that? Because that will decide whether the resulting transfer function that you have got apart from being positive real, it should also be stable yeah? or apart from being uh, I mean apart from being positive real it should also be stable or another equivalent definition is that apart from the Nyquist plot being on the right hand side all of the right half should map into the interior or rather into the right half plane. So, how can we now check that with respect to this original you know the Nyquist plot of the original plan which is g g omega. Now, it turns out that the way one does this is very similar to the um, to the Nyquist uh, the Nyquist plot criterion that one uses for linear plants. Okay. So, let me now try and motivate this uh, interpretation. Okay. So, uh, so here we go let me draw that uh, thing once more. So, let us say this here is the is the Nyquist plot that we have and let me suppose that uh, this here is the circle that we had uh, obtained earlier. So, this is minus 1 by k 2 and this is minus 1 by k 1. Now, we are in this particular situation analyzing this closed loop system which has the linear plant and with a non-linearity in uh, feedback loop and this non-linearity this non-linearity is a non-linearity that lies in the k 1 k 2 sector. Okay. Now, what do we mean by this k 1 k 2 sector? Well, this is also clear this is the line with k 1 this is the line with k 2 this being the input to the nonlinearity this being the output. So, what we mean when we say nonlinearity is lying in the k 1 k 2 sector is that the nonlinearity is something like this. Now, instead of thinking of a non-linearity, let us think of a linearity. I mean, let us think of a linear element that lies in the sector. So, let us say something like this. So, this has slope k, where k is in the interval. So, k is in the interval from k 1 to k 2. So, the slope of this blue line here is k. And so, instead of the non-linearity, let us assume the feedback instead of the non-linearity is really a linear feedback with value k. Okay? So, let us assume that this is the portion which is connected and not the non-linearity. Now, if k is connected instead of the non-linearity, then the resulting transfer function is going to be g upon 1 plus k g. Okay. When can we say that this g plus 1 uh, g upon 1 plus k g, when can we say when is g upon 1 plus k g stable? Okay. The way we decide uh, when this transfer function is stable is again by looking at the Nyquist plot and uh, what we should have is that the Nyquist plot should not encircle the point minus 1 by k. Okay. So, encirclements 
of minus 1 by k decide stability of g upon 1 plus k g ok. And how is that done? That is done by using the Nyquist term you know the, 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 the Nyquist uh, criterion which is that suppose the original transfer function g was stable then the number of encirclements of this point minus 1 by k must be 0. Yeah. On the other hand if g was unstable yeah. If you recall that uh, there was this uh, theorem if 0, uh, if the number of zeros in the right half plane of the, uh, of the transfer function is given by z and the number of poles uh, in the right half plane of g, j omega was given by p, then we had something like n is equal to z minus p, this kind of a formula in the Nyquist criterion. And uh, what that translates to is depending upon the number of right half zeros or right half poles of G of S, one can specify that this G of J omega should encircle this particular uh, point minus 1 by k the appropriate number of times in uh, the clockwise or the anti-clockwise direction depending upon uh, you know whether the number of zeros is larger or the number of zeros the number of zeros in the right half plane is larger or the number of poles in the right half plane is larger okay so if one makes the assumption that g is a stable plant for example then in that case this g j omega should not encircle the point minus 1 by k and notice that this minus 1 by k is going to be some point here because the slope is between k1 and k2. So, now if you look at all these linear plants which can lie between k1 and k2, each time you will get some uh, you know for stability. So, suppose you start with g of s which is stable, then for the uh, for the resulting closed loop system to be stable, you would say that this g of j omega should not intersect some point minus 1 by k and this point minus 1 by k will vary here between the point minus 1 by k 2 which is what you will have if you take the slope of the linear part to be k 2 or minus, minus 1 by k 1 if you take the slope to be k 1. So, as you vary this k you get all these points in the real part of inside the circle and it says that g j omega should not encircle any of them. Okay. That is of course, if you start off with a g of s which is which is stable, then this Nyquist plot should not encircle. Okay. On the other hand, if you start off with some g s which is not stable, that means it has poles or zeros in the in the right half plane then uh, what you would get is that each of the times it should encircle the point minus 1 by k the appropriate number of times in the clockwise or the anti clockwise. So, you could very well have a g of j omega which looks like that okay. and then for each one of these points this guy might result in okay. So, let me call this g 1 g 1 g omega and uh, this is such that for each of these points minus 1 by k it encloses it um, an appropriate number of times. So, if I also draw its uh, reflection, oh, sorry, it should go something like that. Oh, good. Okay, uh, which means that any point here minus one by k gets enclosed once and twice in the clockwise direction, and so twice in the clockwise direction means the original uh, original transfer function suppose the original transfer function had uh, uh, had two uh, poles in the right half plane then uh, if because because you have these two encirclements therefore the resulting transfer function is going to be stable okay 
Now uh, that was what the Nyquist criterion told us. Now uh, that is when you have a linear feedback and for each one of these linear feedback what we are claiming is these points. But now we do not have a linear feedback but we have a non-linearity and this non-linearity you can think of as like think of it as like a linear feedback with a linearity lying in between these slopes k1 and k2 with some perturbation okay so you could think of this nonlinearity as something linear like this k but with some perturbations now one way to view the circle is that this perturbations from this k are captured here within the circle and so the any nonlinearity in this k1 k2 sector can be thought of as a linearity with perturbations and that linearity with perturbations well for the linear parts you get this thing and the perturbation is the rest of the circle so if you avoid any point in this rest of the circle and you have a g of g omega which avoids that point but then the original g of s suppose it is it is stable then in in fact this whole circle shouldn't be encircled okay but if g of s had unstable zero uh, unstable poles then this whole thing should be encircled the appropriate number of times now here is a very interesting way to think of it suppose you think of this k1 going up yeah that means this interval is such uh, that it lies between k1 and k2 and this k1 is allowed to go up now as k1 is allowed to go up therefore the value of k1 changes and say therefore this becomes so k2 is kept constant so therefore this becomes another circle a smaller circle okay and then as it's allowed to go up and up finally let's say this k1 is made larger and larger until finally k1 is equal to k2 then what would have happened is this circle would have shrunk until it becomes just this point minus 1 by k2 now if this interval is shrunk from k1 k2 to k2 k2 that means k1 has become k2 then there cannot be a non-linearity the only feedback that you have is in fact the the linear feedback with uh, uh, with linearity being k2 yeah but what that would have meant is that this circle has shrunk down to this to this one point minus 1 by k2 and then by the nyquist criterion for linear plants we know that the number of encirclements of that minus 1 by k2 by this g j omega would depend upon the open loop g j omegas uh, i mean uh, the open loop plant g s whether it is stable or not if it is stable for example then you should not have any encirclements of minus 1 by k2 if it is not uh, um, if if it is unstable it has um, poles in the right half plane then there should be an appropriate number of uh, encirclements of the point 1 minus 1 by k2 so in some sense all this non-linearity lying between k1 and k2 is captured by this um, the circle and that circle shrinks down to a point when you uh, when you uh, shrink this interval down to making it a linear gain yeah and conversely if you start from a linear gain and you expand it out then as you expand it out the uncertainty comes out in the form of this circle here you know it expands out into that circle with the appropriate size and uh, if the transfer function does the correct number of encirclements for that for that circle then the resulting system is uh, asymptotically stable so in a sense it is the generalization of uh, the nyquist criterion that one uses for the linear plants okay so now you could have the various circle criterion for various different uh, nonlinearities and so let us uh, now look at look at what happens as you change the nonlinearity huh? or the sector in which the nonlinearity is present 
So suppose you take this nonlinearity and let's suppose uh, this is slope k2 and uh, this is slope k1. Now as a result of this what you are going to get here, the circle that you are going to get, well the circle you are going to get is something like that, like so. Well, that might not look like a circle, but let's just assume that this is a circle. So this is minus 1 by k2, and this is minus 1 by k1. And it's in the k1, k2 sector, and this is the circle criterion. That means the, the Nyquist plot should not enter the circle. Yeah. So in some sense, the forbidden region, so the inside of the circle is the forbidden region. So, so long as the Nyquist plot lies outside, you are fine. The transformed Nyquist plot will lie on the right half. Okay. Now, let us do one thing. Let this K1, so the nonlinearity is lying in the K1, K2 sector. Let us move this K1 downwards. That means, the K1, K2, the lower limit is made even lower. So, this is 1 by K1. So, as K1 is made smaller, minus 1 by K1 becomes a larger thing and therefore, the resulting circle is larger. So, as you have made it smaller, so, so suppose you made it this small, then you will end up with a circle which is larger. Okay, so, sorry, this might not look like a circle, but uh, you have to imagine this is a circle. And as you keep uh, as you keep lowering k1 further and further, this circle becomes larger and larger until, until you lowered this k1 so much that k1 became equal to 0. That means, now you are thinking of the nonlinearity in the sector 0 k2. Now, what is going to happen here? This circle that point minus 1 by k1 is becoming larger and larger until when k1 becomes 0, this value of minus 1, up, uh, minus 1 upon k1 becomes minus 1 upon 0, that is infinity. So, it is gone real far off and then the circle criterion essentially tells you that that particular circle is everything to the left, which means the Nyquist plot in this particular case, if you are looking at k1 0 and k2, that means if you are looking at a nonlinearity like this, then the Nyquist plot should lie to the right. Now, instead of uh, pulling this k1 down, if you keep the k1 constant and you push k2 up, then this was the original circle. When you push k2 up, this gets extended until when you hit infinity, it becomes a circle with uh, minus 1 by k1 here and 0 here. So, some circle like that. If you expand k1, if you bring k1 down to 0 and at the same time take k2 up to infinity and make it a 0 infinity sector, well, as you are taking k2 up, this point keeps expanding until you get a circle like that and as you keep expanding k1, it goes off to infinity and so finally, you have this imaginary axis and everything to the left of this is the forbidden area. So, your Nyquist plot should lie completely in the right half plane, which is what essentially the, um, the result about uh, positive reality is all about. Yeah. So, this result is uh, in fact, a more general kind of a result of which the positive real condition is uh, a special case. But now, interestingly, we can do more things. For example, keep k2 like this and k1 could be extended to such an extent that k1 in fact becomes negative. So, this is k1. So, one is looking at a nonlinearity which can lie in this whole sector. Yeah, where oh, okay, so this is the zero slope. Hmm. So, in this whole sector, so you could think of a nonlinearity like this. Okay. 
Now what would happen in this particular case? So if you go back here, you're keeping k2 constant and k1 you're extending and it keeps going, 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 going until it reaches infinity and so therefore you have this whole, whole region is the forbidden region. After that when k1 becomes negative, 1 upon k1 minus 1 upon k1 is in fact a positive quantity which is you know close to plus infinity. So then what is going to happen is when you are looking at um, k1 k2 interval with k1 being less than 0 therefore minus 1 by k1 is greater than 0. And so this minus 1 by k1 is probably some, some point here minus 1 by k1 and uh, minus 1 by k2 is here. So you can take these two points and think of this, this circle here okay yeah so you get a circle like this but there is a catch it turns out that now the bad portion is the outside of the circle okay in other words in other words the nyquist plot should lie completely within this region and anywhere outside is the forbidden region. So earlier we had the circle and the inside of the circle was forbidden and anywhere outside was allowed. But now when this k1 has become negative it turns out that you again get a circle but it is the outside which is forbidden and the Nyquist plot has to lie inside. Okay. Now um, yeah, uh, now one way to one way to think of this is in the following way. So, suppose you have uh, the, the complex plane. So, what you can do is you have this complex plane and all points which are the infinite points you can think of folding the complex plane up and all the points which are infinity think of them together as one point. Therefore, now this complex plane has become like a sphere. Okay. Now, this circle that we drew on the complex plane, if you now translate it onto the sphere, you end up getting a circle on the sphere. Yeah, on the sphere, on the surface of the sphere somewhere you have drawn the circle. Now, if you draw a straight line on the complex plane, then think about the straight line. The straight line if you translate onto the sphere, you will mark all the points in the complex plane, the corresponding points on the sphere. But you see all this infinity you collected up and you had the special point and so th on the, if you are thinking about the sphere, think about the north pole of the sphere as the special point which is all the infinities collected together. So when you are looking at a straight line, this straight line goes to plus infinity and minus infinity which means when you translate it into a curve on the sphere it will touch the, the, the north pole. And so straight lines essentially translate into circles on the sphere which pass through the north pole. Okay? So if the circles pass through the north pole, now, now this is the good part you had you see in this in this uh, diagram you had the circle and the circle kept expanding that means you had the circle in the left half plane which contained the forbidden region and it kept expanding now it kept expanding until it hit it became a straight line that is when k1 became zero slope so that gave you a circle which passed through the north pole so you see you had a small circle on the surface of the sphere and the circle kept expanding and the inside of this uh, I mean on the sphere you are drawing the circle and the inside region of the circle is a bad region the outside region of the circle is the good region as far as the surface of the sphere is concerned and you translate that into paper this is what you get. Now as the circle keeps growing finally when it becomes the straight line that means the slope k1 is equal to 0, then the circle has grown in such a way that it now passes through the north pole. 
Now, when the slope is further reduced from k1 equal to 0, then what happens is that this circle which passed through the north pole has got larger and uh, the infinite point is a forbidden point. Yeah. Now, on the sphere, if you have a circle, that circle will translate either into a straight line if it passes through the north pole or into a circle okay now the point of at infinity will correspond to the the infinite uh, region uh, i mean the the point uh, you know the outer region when you translate it into the map it uh, translates to the outer region so now when the circle expanded so that it became larger this point was the forbid i mean the infinite point the north pole was a forbidden point so that is precisely what happens here when this keeps expanding out yeah and comes to the other side then the point at infinity is a forbidden point so the forbidden part is the outer part and this part is the nice part yeah now if you keep this k1 constant here and now start moving k2 so k1 has a negative slope and now you start moving k2 as you bring k2 down what's going to happen is this nice region this k2 down means this is going to go that way so this nice region is something which is going to keep expanding because this minus 1 by k1 is constant and minus 1 by k2 keeps going further and further so it keeps expanding that way yeah, so the nice region keeps expanding, but the outside region is the bad region until when k2 hits 0. So when k2 hits 0, this minus 1 by k2 has gone off to infinity, which means you have a straight line here. And the good portion is this side and the bad portion is onto the other side. And then suppose k2 becomes negative then minus 1 by k1 is here and minus 1 by k2 would be further to the right and then you have a, would have a circle there and the interior of that circle has to be avoided whereas the exterior is the good portion okay so maybe i would just uh, draw a series of pictures with the circle and i will also draw which is the good region which is the bad region so suppose you have a nonlinearity like this Okay. So, the nonlinearity is in this shaded region. So, the nonlinearity is in between k1, k2, where k1 is positive and less than k2, less than infinity. What this translates to is a circle this is the point minus 1 by k2 this is the point minus 1 by k1 and the forbidden region is the shaded part okay this is what we first showed now if the nonlinearity is expanded such that uh, the nonlinearity is in this sector like this okay so the nonlinearity now is in the 0 k2 sector then what this translates to here so here you have this outside is the good part now he, here what you will have is that minus 1 by that minus 1 by k2 is still there okay let me probably draw these arrows for the original axis so minus 1 by k2 but minus 1 by 0 is infinity so what you have is this line like this and this thing that I am shading is the forbidden region this is a nice region so if you had a nonlinearity like this this circle is there and the circle is the forbidden region if you had the nonlinearity lying between 0 k2 then it is this thing this whole uh, half plane in some sense is the forbidden region and the g j omega has to lie there I mean the Nyquist plot has to lie to the right of this this particular thing now further if you have a nonlinearity so let me draw the axis and you have a nonlinearity which lies in this area 
okay so so the nonlinearity is in the k1 k2 sector so this is k1 this is k2 where k1 is less than 0 is less than k2 then what the circle criterion really tells us is uh, because this is less the k1 is negative therefore minus 1 by k1 is up here and here somewhere is minus 1 by k2 and so you will have a circle okay and the forbidden region is the outside of the circle so unlike the earlier case now the forbidden region is the outside of the circle okay and then if you push further and you have a nonlinearity which lies in a sector like that so this here is k1 this here is k2 so what we have is k1 is less than k2 which in turn is less than 0 now in this case what you have is uh, so you'll have minus uh, 1 by uh, 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 k1 and here you have minus 1 by k2 and you here you have a circle and now it turns out that the forbidden region is again the inside of the circle okay so there are all these various interpretations that happen so uh, one quick way to see it is if you have a nonlinearity uh, in the range between k1 and k2 and uh, therefore you can plot the points minus 1 by k1 and minus 1 by k2 and you can draw the circle which connects these two uh, just like here or here or in the earlier two cases uh, like here or when one of the slopes was 0 so that's infinity so these two okay now if the sign of k1 and k2 are both the same like in this case or in this case then whatever is the circle you got the interior of that circle is the bad part but if the sign of the two are different like in this case then it's the exterior that's the bad part so this uh, sort of sums up the various situations that can happen of course uh, k2 could be made equal to 0 or k1 could be made equal to 0 and you have these special cases k2 could go off to infinity which means that in the original axis it will hit 0 yeah, the circle will hit 0 and uh, the special case of 0 infinity sector being the uh, you know the the left half is the forbidden part and the right half is the nice part okay so that gives uh, um, the complete uh, sort of interpretation for the various uh, aspects of the circle criterion. Now, the other thing is that uh, of course, we have been till now asking about global asymptotic stability, but sometimes using circle criterion, we can talk about local stability and we cannot talk about the global stability. Okay. Now, what I mean by that is the following. So, so it might so happen that the nonlinearity has some characteristics which uh, maybe look like this so let's say it has some characteristics like this okay so uh, i mean one way that uh, you could uh, write out this characteristics is that uh, the nonlinearity is such that um, f of xi yeah that's the nonlinearity is equal to xi when uh, when let's say xi is between plus 1 and minus 1 so minus 1 less than xi less than plus uh, plus 1 okay maybe i'll make it equal and this is equal to 1 so this is like a saturation so it's like linear and then it saturates it's equal to 1 when mod of xi is greater than 1 so you have some nonlinearity like this Okay, so if you have a nonlinearity like this, now uh, what is the sector under which this nonlinearity lies? Well, clearly, this slope 
and the other slope being the zero slope. So we could think of it as lying in that sector. So you can think of this nonlinearity as a nonlinearity, this nonlinearity as a nonlinearity that lies in the zero one sector because this one is zero, and of course this nonlinearity lies completely within within this this particular uh, sector. Okay. So now if you use the circle criterion to translate this what that means is so there is 0 and there is 1. So, what that means is if you are looking at the Nyquist plot. So, corresponding to 1 there is this minus 1 and so the uh, everything to the left of this is forbidden and you can have a Nyquist plot lying on the right and then such a plant. So, such a G when interconnected with this nonlinearity will give us will give us global asymptotic stability ok. But now the following could happen maybe you had a G and that G had a um, Nyquist plot which looked something like that eh? ok. And uh, uh, let us say that this G was such that uh, it had um, uh, it had open loop poles in the right half plane. Now, by circle criterion it might be that uh, there is this circle here with the inside being forbidden and this Nyquist plot is such that for this circle the resulting closed loop stability can be predicted. But now if this is the case, so here this might be some minus 1 by k and this minus 1 by k might uh, correspond to a slope like k here. Now, if you look at the original nonlinearity, the, the original nonlinearity is this one, and the original nonlinearity, of course, lies in the zero infinity sector. But if you have to think of a nonlinearity in the k1 sector, so if you have to think of this original nonlinearity. as lying in the k1 sector okay then as far as this nonlinearity is concerned it's only up to here up to this value uh, let me call this value alpha and here there may be minus alpha okay so it is between minus alpha and alpha that means for the input of the nonlinearity lying between minus alpha and alpha can this nonlinearity that we have originally drawn this nonlinearity here we could think of this nonlinearity as lying in the k1 sector if you restrict yourself to minus alpha and alpha yeah now this psi that means the input to the nonlinearity is essentially the value of the signal on this branch here. And if this branch value is restricted to psi mod psi less than alpha, then, then the nonlinearity that we are considering, this nonlinearity has characteristics which lie in the k1 sector. Okay. And uh, because it lies in the k1 sector, and the g j omega does not intersect this particular circle, we can say for that so long as the psi is restricted to something less than alpha, this given system is, uh, is asymptotically stable. Yeah? So, it is not globally asymptotically stable, but it is asymptotically stable so long as you look at only that portion of the phase space where the psi is uh, less than uh, the mod modulus value of psi is less than alpha. 
and then for that restricted region of the phase space of course this includes the situation when psi is equal to 0 and when psi is equal to 0 the output is also equal to 0 and that in fact is the equilibrium point that we want to get things into. So, you have the phase plane you have the origin of this phase plane and for psi less than alpha you have an area surrounding it and what what we can say from this Nyquist plot criterion is that so long as the psi is less than alpha and you start somewhere for this system with this psi value being less than alpha you are guaranteed that you reach the origin and so this is like local asymptotic stability as opposed to global asymptotic stability ok. So there are various things that you can do with the circle criterion uh, depending upon half, uh, how the original uh, Nyquist plot looks like yeah. So, um, so anyway so with that uh, I guess I am out of time for this lecture so let me stop here now and uh, we will continue with uh, the new topic in the next lecture.